This thing gonna do? Fleckin' Not gonna be too bad for freaking Facebook eh? Cause he can't be all night freaking with this Alright Live Lot of mercy Yeah. Lot of mercy Oh, he's a dummy, I can check it on my phone Anyhow, head up Yeah, because this Wi-Fi is not working with a problem. It's on, man. It's on. on. Alright, let me use my phone to check it. Greg. Yes, ma'am. I want to talk to you today about the other thing, too. Alright, no problem. Don't go down, Brown. Please, 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 please. I want to talk to you today about the other thing, too. Hello? Yeah, you good? Yes, we good to go. Yay! All right. Uh, so something. So it is my phone then. I must have got to restart it or something. Let me see. Okay, so I can share it. Are you doing wrong? Please, 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 please. Yes, we good. All right. So let, let me, me start sharing map two. All right. Oh, we got that back. Right? As I said, we didn't forget that. Ah, share. Right post. Timeline. Right this time. This is the why I say. Light up. Let us hit record. To all of my jiggers and, and cheating Travis, whenever you're ready. Cheat. Please go right ahead. <laughs> and cheating Travis, whenever you ready, you know. Cheating yes. Travis. Well, like, I'm sharing and all that stuff right That's now. That's cheating okay. with a T. <laughs> cheating, <laughs> cheating with, with the T. The before show, the before show. Audio sounds good. We are good to go. All, All right. right. So can I watch it on your phone? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Makes me feel. Oh, that's useful. right. I suppose to plug your phone in. Share to all the groups. Me suppose to plug your phone in. So you don't die. We're building an audience for you. Solid. Alright, you finished, boss? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah I, could, I could talk right now, though, for me. Alright, um, so since I've been away for three episodes, it's probably been like three weeks to a month, yeah, uh, yeah. I'll I'll do the honor and bring it in this beautiful episode. First of all, let me just do out there for the record. I'd like to apologize yeah. to my co-hosts for being absent for those while. But don't apologize. Just apologize to the listeners and the listeners. Yeah, hey, you weren't here. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> We're still putting out good quality shows with good quality content that out to people. I am Travis Miller. We have Greg Colley and we have Gail Hanna. Yes, sir. And today we're going to talk to you about entrepreneurship in episode 22. Did anybody know what entrepreneurship is, first and foremost? I didn't until you all explained to me just now because that is honestly the first time I've ever heard that term. Nice. Same, same thing for you? Um, I kind of have a general idea about what it is, but I think you should read the official, like, the official you know, thing. Google definition. Well, I, I kind of I have it. But okay, basi well, yeah. basically, entrepreneurship is acting like an entrepreneur within your own company or a big company that you're in. So having entrepreneurial tendencies within a company that you're currently in or been working for for a while. 
um, and the company allows you to take risk as an entrepreneur to think about new and innovative ideas that mm. essentially help the company in general because they're thinking of new and fresh ways mm. uh, to always build on the business. Interesting. So, uh, and it, it might kind of be like a, a side thought for a lot of people because we have a lot of people that are working uh, nine to fives and we actually got this idea from a person in the STC community uh -huh. and I'll read exactly. Yeah. Um, Shout out to Brandon Morrison. Yeah. Thanks for your We're trying to hide your face? No. Well, okay. you, you, you don't want the girls hitting on you. Wow. Oh, wow, no. wow, wow, wow. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> Brandon uh, shot this in the group. Half of us in this group may probably be never be entrepreneurs. Half of us probably don't even want to be entrepreneurs. We may want to grow in a business or just move up the ranks. Um, so can we talk about this, this topic? So what are your initial thoughts from that in terms of... <laughs> I think it's interesting. And um, like I said uh, before we started recording... Um, the first thing that came to mind was, firstly, you would have to be in a company that would allow for that. Mm -hmm. Because I think we have a lot of companies that just want you to show up, do what they tell you to do, go home and be okay with whatever it is they pay you. You, you, are, you are being paid to do what they tell you to do and not actually think. Right. So not a lot of companies are receptive to individuals, with, uh, to new ideas or you know, any change of direction coming from, well, at least certain people within the company, which would be on the lower ladder. Mm -hmm. So I think, firstly, in order for you to be an entrepreneur, you would have to first exist within an organization that allows for that and that, are, like I said, that's open to hearing that from the employees. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the first thing you would have to consider when, if, if you are not an entrepreneur, but you would still like to, like you said, be innovative within the company that you uh, are working for. So that's the first thing I would say you would have to consider is if they even allow that. And if they don't, well, what do you do in that position? I mean, you may be in a bad position, but you just want a job, you need a job, and you may want to take that right then until you could find that, jo uh, that business that's you know, open to that. I mean, it's an interesting position to be in, but that's, that's the first thing that came to mind when I learned what the term actually was. Mm -hmm. Knowledge. Yeah, and I feel as though if, you, if you, it's something that you are interested in, then you can only ask. You know, you could get a yes or a no, and as Greg said, a lot of companies may not be open to that sort of thing. If you are the company you are working for is not open to it, maybe you can consider, you know, uh, would you really want to work for a company that does not offer um, training or opportunities for growth or, you know, allow for certain things within the company. Um, but I, just ask and see. I feel as though if it's not in direct competition with them, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to do so. And aside from being an entrepreneur, also have a side hustle, even though you are working this nine to five. Um, see what you can do to earn some money on the side if you're not really ready to jump into being an entrepreneur. If, if entrepreneurship is not for you, you can also contribute in other ways. Knowledge. So, yeah. So even on that note, too, um, you might have a situation where it's a, a combination of both. The company may not even realize that they need an entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, being an entrepreneur or even being a person in a position to make creative calls, right? You're essentially adding value to that company, mm -hmm. right? So if you, I feel if you're adding a lot of value to a company, you should be able to make the particular things that you do. But then again, you might have employers that just want you to be a cog in the wheel. Right, and uh, a lot of people, a lot of them are, are traditional and creatures of, of habit. Mm -hmm. And so are not often... Um, looking at it the way you did, like you explained, like you adding value, they don't see it as that. Mm -hmm. Some may see it as, man, listen, what, what, what you, why are you in here? Why are you talking about these things? Just, I paying you to do that, just go ahead and do that. Yeah. And they have just been, they're in that frame of mind for so long that they'd be stuck in that. If it ain't broke, don't fix it right. type of thing. Right, yeah. exactly. So they may not be open because they're just stuck in their ways and they don't see an actual problem. Mm -hmm. and, that, and I think it actually happens a lot here where you see companies just doing the same thing for long periods of time because we as consumers, we patronize these establishments even if we get poor service or we don't like certain processes, we still go ahead and give them our money. Mm -hmm. So there's no incentive for them to even change any practices that they may have. So they see it, man, listen, the money's still coming in the way we want it to. Why we got to listen to this new idea you have, why we have to change. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's a core point on that incentive piece as well because right. especially coming from indus industries like advertising like so like social media things that you need a lot of creative for mm -hmm. is it, well there's two coins of that when i was doing more corporate type jobs it was like you had a, a role and a function to play you pay that function but being more in the creative industries 
Um, like they, it was a test to see how creative you are, or how mm. effective you are doing the different things, kind of like to prove your chops. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, not not different from like uh, understudy of a chef, where it's like, okay, how could you cook this egg, mm -hmm. and how creative could you get with cooking this egg, and if it's good enough, you may even add value to the to the restaurant where people want to buy this. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's where incentive is key. It's like for yourself individually as an entrepreneur, you want to know you added value to the company, and in some way you kind of tie your name to that. Um, and you know you could just move from there. Mm -hmm. I think one of the first steps is to really look around and say, if I own this business, or if I was manager of this department, or if I, you know, had a chance to make some changes, what would I do? And you essentially list all of the problems that you see within the department, that organization, that business, and then from there. What solutions can I come up with for mm. these problems? How can I fix this? And in that way, you have already even contributed value to the business by presenting those ideas. But not only that, how do we execute these solutions? Mm -hmm. So it's a full you know, three-step process. You realize there's a problem. How do you solve it? How to execute the, the, the solution? Mm -hmm. And that's something that you can do on your 9 to 5 right now. Mm -hmm. And then, and just before we segue from that, another thing that you touched on too is that side hustle. Another key component of that side hustle is that even if in your company your employer might not allow you to do things, mm -hmm. you have full range to test it out on your own, mm -hmm. and then use that as a proven point to either take to that to your employer, or if you realize you've been fighting a battle for the while and they're not really biting on it, yeah. then you just you build up the way to kind of transition from potentially being an entrepreneur to full blown entrepreneur with the things that you really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Then, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, same with the entrepreneur skills as well. Um, you are adding value to the company, you know, even though, again, if you are unable to start your own business, you're uninterested in it. Again, we always say not everybody is an entrepreneur, but as you solve problems, you are acting as a business owner. Mm -hmm. Because essentially, if you are just the cog in a wheel, making your paycheck and going home, you're not really adding any additional value. But if you are trying to solve problems, then of course, you, they will see you as, you know, somebody value. They may not see that, sorry, but mm -hmm. uh, you would hope that by adding this additional solution-based idea or whatever the case may be, you would be included in maybe some more brainstorming, maybe some more crea mm -hmm. of the creative aspect of the business. You never really know what the, how, where these steps can actually take you. Right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like a balance of initiative and, you know, just... Opportunity, I guess. So what would you do if, like, the idea, you present this idea, you present these solutions, and the company rejects it? Oh, what has that say? happened? What, has that happened? Yeah. Oh, yeah, several times. In more, okay. in, in more corporate structures, you still play those office politics where um, you're the young kid coming in, and it's like you have these new, fresh ideas, and it'd be like, oh, you know, you're just here. You don't really understand yet. Mm -hmm. Or at some, in some situations, you even come off as a threat. Mm -hmm. It'd be like this way, trying oh, yeah. to take my job mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And we have a lot of that here, yes. what I want to yes. highlight at the Say end of this. Yes. Talk yes. about yes. that again, yeah. please. It, it's definitely because <laughs> there's been situations where I talk to friends and, and very, you know, the, the more notable corporate structures here is that when you try to do new things and you even make impact, they'd be like... Oh, what that by doing? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, trying to take that, and then they literally conspire against you yeah. because you're trying to do innovative things. You're not necessarily trying to even better yourself. It's trying to like you better see the, the holes company, in the yes. company, mm -hmm. and you're trying to do something. But well, you know what it is? <laughs> it's because they're mediocre, and because you coming in and you bringing additional value beyond that mediocrity that they're accustomed to. Mm -hmm. See. You, you're going to force them to have to do more, which they ain't into. That's true. Valid. You understand? Valid, valid, so valid. a lot of people... They kind of step the game up type of thing. Exactly. Yeah. When, when people have an issue with someone that's coming in and doing more, it's because they don't want to do more. Mm -hmm. They feel like, oh, you who you is trying to come in here and do extra? You're trying to outshine us. Mm -hmm. And now you can force them in a position to where they look like less. Mm -hmm. So that's why they feel threatened. And they would much rather keep you down at that level or bring you down to that level than bring themselves up to a level that you're trying to ascend to. Right. Yeah. That's, that's what our phenomenon is. I had a supervisor, and she was an expat actually, who refused to train us on this program that they brought from wherever they were um, because of that same kind of threaten, threatening feeling, mm. right? Where even though I would be able to say, okay, this is a good program, this is how we could probably use it most effectively, she was totally against that. Mm. So if you are in that position, 
I, I don't know what to tell you, honestly, to not be discouraged mm. or to not lose, as he said, that spark. Mm. Like, how do you not get discouraged by things Right, like because that? if you do it over time and you keep it in that brick wall, you, you're going to get discouraged. And, but, like, to go back and say, like, how would I implement it? Mm -hmm. In my perspective, I would sneak it in with my own work. I would, I would be humble with it, almost. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I know what needs to be done, and I just perform, and then don't be, don't, don't make innovative things and be like, oh, look at me. I'm doing new and, and cool things. Mm. Kind of be like, okay, like, I kind of pat it like a secret solid. It, and so people be curious. <laughs> mm -hmm. The employer be curious. Okay, hey, how are you actually doing this? Or right. your employees would be like, hey, how are you doing that? Mm. At the same time, too, if, if you come up with a solution, try to share it with your team. Right. And then don't let it just be on you. Mm -hmm. be, right. as, be, the, be together as a group trying to do the innovative things. And oh. I think that will go a long way That's a good way it, as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good. That's kind of how I was thinking it. Yeah, because mm -hmm. yeah, I, I I try to think of many times where because I I, I think um, at my last place of employment I think I did give some ideas for certain things. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they were very well. They they were receptive in terms of they would hear you out, saying, mm -hmm. yeah. but in mm -hmm. terms of implementation, like especially when it comes to um, recommending things for the ship, like things you know you need or that would make you know your job a bit easier yeah. or allow you to be more productive. You would say these things over and over and over again and they just wouldn't, you know, oblige. So there have been times like that. And it can be discouraging, but I mean, if you plan on being there, I guess for a while, you do your best to not allow it to get to you. You just continue to move forward and I guess continue to mention it. But that's a good way to do it. Like you say, try and sneak it in. And you can do that for some things when it comes yeah. to certain procedures. Uh -huh. But like if it comes to things that extra stuff that they may need to get mm -hmm. and spend money on that'll be more right. difficult hey to i need fifty five thousand <laughs> for this budget just to order these few things right. yeah that, that'll be that. more difficult yeah. if yeah. you want yeah. them to actually go in their pocket yeah. to spend for something on that same note i'm thinking that as you work for a company as well you know who the key players are so it's exactly. two things right you play the politics the game relationship game and the attitude game yeah. number one with the attitude you can't be on the job Come in late every day, don't look at sloppy or whatever, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. talking about you have these great ideas and expect people to be receptive to you. Not or like your it. attitude sucks. You've been on this job for five years and you're mad. That's really mm -hmm. your problem. You gotta show up to play but the then, part essentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you become this bad apple to poison everybody else. Like, first of all, attitude adjustment. Second of all, key players. Learn who the key players are within the company. I might be able to, if you're our boss, you may be more receptive to Greg than to me, mm. right? And you can see and you know within a company who you can give certain things to that you know it'll end up in, a, in the place where you want it to be, mm -hmm. right? So sit down and really study and think about these relationships and develop that relationship with somebody. Whereas you may not be receptive to me, but then I go to Greg mm -hmm. and I say, Greg, you know, I'm having this idea. What do you think about this? Blah, blah, blah. And then eventually get him to the point where, you know, I'm going to take this to Travis and see what Travis right. says. That will be more effective for you as well. But even that in general, those are like the invisible things inside and outside the company mm -hmm. that people don't talk about a lot in terms of knowing who you need to approach. Inside the company, you need to know, okay, what's the packing order, right? Mm -hmm. But you still take those lessons outside the company and be like, okay, you got to talk to people who are the decision makers who have the money. Yeah. So like entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship, they have their, their parallels. Mm -hmm. And I think it's definitely important to um, yeah, like show, show up for the job. Like if you want this, you want this extra op opportunity to do that, you got to act like it, act like it mm -hmm. and prep yourself. Mm -hmm. But here's a question that I have on, more mm -hmm. on the in, employer side is that how do we as entrepreneurs that are starting our own companies and employers that currently have their companies, how could they um, start thinking more at looking at their employees and kind of empowering them to make decisions like high-level players? to kind of open up that way for uh, entrepreneurship. I think you have, to, you have to set that culture from the beginning. You have to make sure that that's a part of the culture. You have to make sure that you are always open and receptive to your employees at all times. You don't shut yourself off or close yourself off. I see a lot of entrepreneurs like, um, they don't have a door in their office. Mm -hmm. or the office is all, like, there's no door. Open you can door come in, policy. open door, like mm -hmm. you can come in at any time. Like mm -hmm. I think you have to set that culture of being receptive to new ideas, and they will automatically feel comfortable coming to you with ideas. Mm -hmm. But if you uh, establish a culture of you know being closed off, then they're gonna you know be less 
you know, inclined to come to you with anything or ideas that they may have. So I think it's just a matter of setting that culture from the beginning and the way you carry yourself and the way you interact with your employees, mm -hmm. you create that open uh, uh, level of comfort to where they could come to you with basically anything. Yeah, like yeah, anything. Like it's like you just walk in and say like, well, it's the same working like this. I think we need to go this approach. Mm. I, that, that is key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think also as an employer, uh, you know, we look for cu uh, customer feedback, but we don't look for employee feedback. Exactly. Where yep. you should yep. make it a point to speak with your employees. If not, you know, weekly or daily, you can't manage that. Once per month, have open and honest dialogue or have some a box where people can drop suggestions, people anonymously, mm. because, you know, you don't want to be targeted or whatever, should you give a certain suggestion. Mm. Um, but as employers, take it upon yourself. I mean, you've entrusted your business with these people. Mm. You should also empower them to be able to make suggestions, empower them to implement the suggestions, and invest in them as employees. Um, if you see employees who do training and other things like that, they seem to be more motivated, I would say, than um, employees who, again, just another cog in the wheel, and you could tell that your employer feels as though you're just another cog in the wheel. So for employers, I believe that you set the president, as you said, build this culture where people are able to come and speak to you and give suggestions. Yeah, and I think you said something important just now that's very real, but it, what shows uh, that you haven't said the right culture, you said uh, they can have as a suggestion box where you can leave anonymous. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you're, that's when you're already in it and you're trying to no, but change uh, it around well, if you Okay, but well, if you're trying to yeah. change a culture, then yeah. yeah. But, and that, that tells you that the, the, the right culture was not established. Right. If people are afraid to be targeted just for offering suggestions, yes. okay. then that says clearly... There's a wrong cult. The wrong mm -hmm. culture is wrong around here. Mm -hmm. yes. It's not an open culture, and people are not comfortable with providing feedback. Mm -hmm. So you, that, that's, that's like you said. If you're coming in and you're trying to change a company, then yeah, that's yeah. different. But if you if you start, now. start your own business and you notice that that exists, you you did something wrong. But yeah, mm -hmm. you, know, you start off on the right foot. Yeah. Um, now sometimes entrepreneurship isn't just a solo thing. It is also as a group and teams, right? Mm -hmm. So you as a, uh, as an entrepreneur, let's say you look at an opportunity or a solution that involves different departments or different disciplines. Mm -hmm. What do you think inside of a company that you need to do in order to rally the troops in order to, uh, to as a group, either A, propose the, the change mm -hmm. and pr propose exactly how it would work? So essentially coming up with the business model within the current corporate structure. A, how do you propose that? And B, how do you rally the troops in the sense that this will improve everybody's lives mm -hmm. and or reduce the amount of jealousy that may that may oh, come boy. for trying to do the new things because if you share if you share the wealth then less people will be combating against you mm -hmm. I guess when you're trying to do these new things. I think two things. The first thing is knowing your audience, right? Some bosses prefer numbers. Some bosses you need to come with the marketing. Some bosses you need to come with you know various aspects of the business. So once you know what your boss or whomever you're presenting to is looking for, it will make the presentation itself a lot easier for you and the team. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is to know everybody's strengths. Um, not everybody is as good as everything. Maybe one person can present, one person can do the numbers, one person does the marketing plan, etc. But whatever you decide to do, like capitalize on the strength of the group and each person's individual contribution to that group, as opposed to waiting for everybody to kind of do the same things. Because I flicking hate group projects. Like, hate it. You just don't yeah. like people, that's all. And it's not that I don't like people, yeah. right? Yeah. But without fail, there's going to be one person in the group that does nothing, that uh, messages the night before, yeah, so what y'all work on and how can I help type of situation? Mm. Or somebody will do something. Or somebody's supposed to be the leader and they wasn't chosen as the leader and now they salty. Right. Or, you know, like, just basic group dynamics. But the thing about that is, though, <laughs> is, like, I like how you, you use the words with the different context. So, like, outside of a company, entrepreneurship is, like, you're trying to build your team and mm -hmm. then you're pitching to investors. Mm -hmm. But inside the company... It essentially is a group project because all y'all work at the same place. So y'all yeah. kind of know to some level what everybody's really working on already. Mm -hmm. And then you present it to, your, to the boss, the investor, to yeah. the investor, which right. is the boss in it. Right. But, I, but I think um, even on that note in terms of making sure people do what they do on their group project is one, knowing what is already happening in the company. And also even pitching it to the employer in a sense where they give you an extra time or two mm -hmm. on company time or however they want to do it to give you that space to work and create and come up with a solution. Mm -hmm. So like say, okay, 
uh, like you might pitch the over uh, level idea, right? And be like, okay, Saul, I like this idea. I'll give you a week to give me something to do. Here's an extra t uh, hour or two this week paid to come up with this proposal. Shoot it to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that probably could go a long way if you play your cards right. Like, you got to know who to talk to right. for those different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm too familiar with group projects. So I, <laughs> Lucky you. Yeah, I, I, finally someone can put you down, spark. <laughs> I think Brian also mentioned the spark. You know, if you're mm -hmm. in a nine to five, you love your job, you used to love your job, whatever the case may be, like, how do you keep the spark where you are? Um, I think the biggest way to keep the spark for where you are, regard regardless of where you are, right. is that you got to have a higher level goal and vision for where you want to be career wise. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, here's the thing: even though you may love a particular company or been with a company for a while, a lot of people, and I think this is kind of damaging a lot of people now. They think their career ends or their life, and, and, and to an extent, ends at that one company. Yeah. Versus anything could happen. Either you just need it's time for you to transition out that that company. That company may go under. You may get fired. All those things don't matter if you have a higher level vision for what your career needs to be. Mm -hmm. So like if you bulletproof your career in a sense that you know what you want for yourself, mm -hmm. you know that you add value no matter where you are. Right. Right. Uh, and I think that's the biggest thing to keep you motivated because okay, I might lose this job, but at least I know I'm still on track. I learned what I need to do. I took advantage of all the opportunities presented to me. Mm -hmm. I'll be good wherever I go next. Mm -hmm. But where you have people losing their spark is that they think like this is the end yeah, of the road well, yeah. and be mm -hmm. like, oh, nothing will happen. No change will ever happen. It's just got to go through the motions. As long as I pay my bills, mm -hmm. everything will be fine. And it kind of yeah. it kind of limits that at the spark level. Oh yeah, Great. I ain't got nothing to add to that uh, <laughs> to say, but. I think we skip uh, probably one of the most important steps, okay. which is the initial step, which is identifying whether you're an entrepreneur or an entrepreneur. Okay. Mm. How do you even come to that place where you realize that, you know, I'm not really an entrepreneur, but I'm an entrepreneur? How do, mm -hmm. What are the signs that lead you to entrepreneurship? I, I think the signs that will be clear to me and this is this is the advantage of being an entrepreneur right because when you're an entrepreneur you have to come up with that stuff you have to visualize that stuff from scratch mm -hmm. but I think when you're an entrepreneur in the company especially if you have the drive to either make your life better or the company's better over time you'll see where things could improve if you're aware enough to keep that open mm -hmm. either A you see it within the processes yourself mm -hmm. B you know what your employer is always complaining about or, or C, you just know that, that, that transition you want to make. And entre entrepreneurship also comes at the level where you may start out in one position at a company and mm -hmm. you know you don't want to be there and you want to go into another position. So you innovate to get to that position. Mm -hmm. I think being in a company where things are already established is easier to visualize where you could be, which kind of sparks you to, to, to take the initiative to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneur is a little bit harder because you have to be a little bit more creative or your back has to be against the wall. Mm -hmm. Uh, type scenario. Mm -hmm. I think if you want to come to work at nine o'clock and leave work at five o'clock, entrepreneurship may be more for you than entrepreneurship. I like that. I like that. Well, I you talk like, like if, when, you, if the clock if hit and it's five, it's like time to you're go. You're unwilling to do yeah. mm -hmm. anything extra or not mm. too much more than what it is that you're supposed to do, or not too Knowledge. much more than what you're thinking. Yeah. Then maybe entrepreneurship is not for you because entrepreneurship does not have. A time bracket. There no. is no, hey, you need Real to be here and then you go home. Like mm. if you are unprepared to do that, keep your nine to five. Well, I can, I can, I can, <laughs> I can, uh, I can boys scale bubble. Go ahead, because well, I, I feel. Burst my bubble. I feel. <laughs> now here's. Let me give my reason, or at least the one sign that I feel would be the easiest way to identify it. Mm -hmm. If you are too afraid of the risk. If you don't like risk and you don't want the entire weight or brunt or responsibility on your shoulders, mm -hmm. I think that's a big sign that you are more so an entrepreneur than an entrepreneur. Because as an entrepreneur, the buck stops with you. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneur, you still have All, that buffer of the company. Exactly. Yeah. In, entrepreneur, it doesn't stop with you. Mm -hmm. Someone else is responsible for that. But you can still be creative within wherever establishment and you know do mm -hmm. what you need to do, implement ideas but that, if it's allowed. But exactly. If you if if every time you go to do entrepreneurship and the risk forces you back into a job or the responsibility, that I think is a big sign. Mm -hmm. And I think is is and I think 
And Gail can tell me if I'm wrong, but I think Gail is battling with that right now in terms of that risk and responsibility, which is why one, not just how, but people would, they would start something, but then revert back into a job. Or it could be, you no, see, you may want to do something like, okay, well, let me go to this job, make this couple of dollars so that I could have this capital to do this thing. Mm -hmm. That could be the case too. But if, if your reason for taking job after job is the responsibility or the fear or the risk, then I think those are signs that you are more so an entrepreneur than an entrepreneur. Mm. But there's a lot of different ways you could look at that, though, in terms of talking about risk, even from the entrepreneur standpoint, right? I think and we talk a lot about us as a country, even just in general, having safe places where you could take risk and fail more. I think there's probably not a more safer place to take a risk than within the company. Mm. And, and I'll say it like this. It's because, like, your goal as an entrepreneur is to innovate and find ways to better the company, right? Mm -hmm. And you could keep pushing ideas. And then I don't know if I agree with that. No, so I mean, let me, let, me, let me explain. No, so it's like, yeah, I don't know okay, if I agree so with that. Okay, so when, when, when you're an entrepreneur, like, like I said, the buck stops with you. It all stops on you. Being an entrepreneur, you have a little bit of buffer of the, the company. So you, it could either go really good, you try a lot of different things, and then you kind of move up that ladder or, or add new things to the company. Mm -hmm. Or they'd be like, you push hard enough and you get fired or you decide to change. What's, gonna, what's the worst thing that's going to happen is say, oh, I got let go from my job because I tried to, to do innovative things. <laughs> I think that helps you in the long run. Now, here's what I say in terms of the lower risk. So you can, and this is why it's also important to take, even if you're taking a nine to five, take it in an industry that you are legitimately interested in. Because even if you don't implement the things you want to do from an entrepreneurship level, at least you know you're still passionate about that thing. So even if you transition to another company or you decide to go out on your gnome and really take the entrepreneurship, you're at least creating and taking risk in where you want to be. So I think risk in that level is a little bit more better for the person. I, I, don't, here's why I don't necessarily agree with that, that the risk is less. I see where you're coming from, and you know it makes sense. But my thing is, the reward in entrepreneurship so is so much risk greater. Versus, yeah, risk, risk versus, versus reward, reward. Yeah, and also in that context, also the control. Because, like we said earlier, they may not. You may have all these ideas and stuff, but you don't control the implementation of these mm -hmm. ideas. Or in you, entrepreneurship, you have ideas. You could do it. And even the, the double-edged side of that is like, you, they might love and eat up all your ideas, and, uh, and you, call, you make them a millions of dollars, right. and you and still you get, get no, paid 30 no Exactly. So, yeah. So that's why, I, don't, that's why yeah. I say I don't think it's necessary less risk in uh, a company. I mean, I, I see where you were where you mm. going. Which but I like mean, that approach as well. But it's, uh, to me, it's, the reward is so much greater when you do it for yourself, and you also have that control. So you don't have to... Oh, let me go see. I hope they like this idea and that they implement it. You don't have that, that buffer or that field. You could, if you have an idea, you could just do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, you know, like you said, if, if, you, if, it, if it fails, you lose your job. Well, if you lose your job, then essentially you're almost in the same position as if you were doing it for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But the reward factor is there when you're doing it for yourself. Mm -hmm. So like, like you just said, if, if you did it and it doesn't fail and it succeeds, then you may still be in a position where you're getting paid the same little measly Not salary like, and they don't give you no credit or nothing <laughs> and they implement it and make more money and you just sitting there like, boy, well, that was a good was idea I had, hey? Whereas if you <laughs> do it like, for yourself, you can, benefit. Can yeah. You can know can what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's the way I see that. Mm. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure why you thought you was gonna burst my bubble with that one. No, no, I just say it like that just for a little, little suspense to add a little bit, little bit of you know people like the hair so criminal. Yeah, a little drama. You know, y'all like drama. Famous like drama. Interesting. They enough. was like, what? What are you gonna say? He's gonna burst the bubble. What are you gonna say? Burst the bubble final next time on WTV. <laughs> you no, know but people like those buzzwords. But but interesting enough, what you also see too, probably in higher level areas like Silicon Valley and stuff, is that you have entrepreneurs kicking ass and actually implementing it. And then you have people like Google and Apple come to acquire the companies. Exactly. And yeah. then they turn them from entrepreneurs to entrepreneurs. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what's your thought on that in terms of like, let's say, you know, like you build a great business mm -hmm. and then a company comes and said, okay, we want to give you $3 million, $5 million for this. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's why you're in business. And a lot of people get 
stuck on that phase because part of being an entrepreneur, part of developing a business is to develop a product that you will be able to sell and move on, mm -hmm. right? A lot of people also, they're entrepreneurs, this is my baby. That's me. Oh, I, I won't can't, lie. I, I can't, can't let this go. Like I, I, There's I don't nothing wrong with both. There's nothing wrong with both. It, There's right? nothing wrong with but both. as a business person, uh -huh. two things. Number one, you still need to, make you a need great to product. know where the peak is, mm -hmm. right? You need to know where, okay, we've been coasting, we've been making X amount of dollars for X amount of time. Maybe we could consider No, selling. I get that, but there's and a difference a between people, a, but if, see, a business person and an entrepreneur, I think, are different. Because here's the thing. As what entrepreneurs, if, but you what need if, to build a business that you can do two things with. Number one, it can operate without you. And tune in next week to hear more about that. And number two, shameless that you, can plug. Sell, if you can sell your company. But if that is your goal. Because I may build it a business. Be your goal. No, I, I, no, I, no, I, I don't disagree. agree with that. I will find the documentation and the research to support that. No, but statement. that's the, you, you can, can disagree with me for now. Yeah, yeah I mean, no, but you can bring all that all you want. So but if if you he have, sell your if he build a business that he he he, he is his it reason your vision. his reason may not be financial. He may not build a business that right. he wants not about to sell. Financial. No, but what I'm saying is okay. So that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you build a business. To sell it, no, it's like no, having no, a child. No, no, that's not necessary. Okay, this is why. This is why. This is so why. Right? Why? No, 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 why? No, 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 no. Exactly. Exactly. It's still growing. He hasn't reached the plateau. But he that's isn't going to sell it because that's the question. But I bet you he does if they do. I bet you he sell if they do reach that it. plateau. I. You don't take Facebook plateau yet? No, it's Phil still Gata. growing. It's still growing. <laughs> They've just added more features to Facebook. I. I don't. But I don't think that point. Let me tell you. You know we. We're coasting. See, that's fine. I don't think you, you sell, sell it. it. If I don't if think I had sold, those people would have been better off than they are now. Oh yeah, because dying. But that's what right? the option is. Uh, th that really the stopped the bus that it was a shitty. When you plateau. No, but you can't set people motive. For the that. company, I'm the company didn't motive. make. You saying that's what they should do, and you should be you in business to sell. That's you setting the motive for for them. With the to be able to sell it at some point. No, I don't agree with that. That's if, okay. if, first of all, if I know, okay. if well, that's no, on two levels, on two levels, Vine is actually an entrepreneurship thing because Vine was started by a small team in Twitter. Okay. First and foremost. Two, how Vine peaked is that I don't think it was at the level where the company peaked. The product itself peaked because of the competitors from it. But did it they didn't really, really peak have a, though? It, it, it peaked if you didn't innovate. Okay. They stopped innovating. So you feel as though Vine could have gone further than they did? It could have, but they didn't go in with the intention How of so? selling Vine. They could have they could have added more features or kind of listened to the market a little bit better. Like what? Um, let's say Vine kind of stopped at six second videos. They yeah, could have done stuff like where they could have expanded like it to did 15. What it was made to do, and they could have sold it at its height, profited from that. And then it's it's demise, but they would not have affected them. But I don't think they would have ever sold it because it's still a part of Twitter. I think at most it added value to Twitter as a company in general. Because but this it, is what I'm saying: as you are an entrepreneur and as you build a business, mm. build it with the intention of being able having to an action strategy go uh, at some point. I'm not saying build it to let it go. Okay, but have that option. Need, it's like yeah. like I said, yeah. it's like having a child, and a lot oh, of people are like entrepreneurs. This might okay, be. That's a party. Yeah, oh, I yeah, can't yeah. let this yeah. go. At some point, you need to be able to. You say, should be thinking so about that. That's as why well. I say I agree with um, the company purchasing the other company. You becoming an entrepreneur, and again, you as an entrepreneur, as you mentioned, risk and responsibility, right? As an entrepreneur, that decreases greatly for you rather than entrepreneurship. But they doing that. Uh, they're acting as entrepreneurs. Five million dollars richer. I mean, mm. yeah, but that's if that's a bad deal. That's if you're in it for the money, <laughs> because money don't mean the same, same to everybody. Travis, <laughs> Money was. That's Kidra. Oh my money, goodness, money, <laughs> money, money don't mean the same to everybody. That's all I'm saying. Like some people build it's a business because they love. Yes, it is. If you can, you can't say that you should be built, and you and you've just been making points that is about the money because your your arguments to Travis were they would have been better off if they had sold it for this amount because they would have had more money. Basically, is what I'm you're not saying. saying. They would have had more money. It's at the risk and the responsibility. That but you, you don't know. Has been but you don't. Guessing. My thing is, if you don't know someone's motive then I don't think it's your place to say they should have sold because their so, motive Greg, may not have been financial. Let me ask you something. If you build a business up uh -huh. to a point that's compared it to a child, right? Mm -hmm. And you have a daughter. Your daughter, I, I'm sure you are training and developing, etc., with her so that at a certain age, she'll be able to manage and function on her own mm -hmm. without you, right? That's all I'm trying to say. Where build it in. The, 
the, but you don't you have, have to sell the it to, you don't have to sell it for it to run itself no you don't have to sell it but you need to be able to develop it to the point where if you can or if you are able to sell it you would be able to or if you don't stay there for the you don't want your daughter 40 years old in your house not working not doing anything watching the tv you I don't get like, no, so I, I don't think that's a good idea. No, no, no. no, 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 no Taking like, all the drinks and slop it around, and just because for the sake of it being your daughter, you're holding on to her. This is what I'm saying. In business, I get the analogy. There's a. I get it, but I don't. I don't think it's a, a good development to a good point. You plateau. Okay. And everybody has to let it go. Yeah, like, that's my like, point. Yeah. Like you, you, you. No, you don't have to necessarily. Like I agree. Most people do build businesses to sell. That's fine. If that's if that's your motive, then fine. Not to sell. No, no, but some, no, but some people, people, some people, no, solely some they do. Some no, some people, people solely do. build those businesses to, to sell. sell. There are okay. many yeah. people that do that. You have all. Nobody's wrong. Nobody's wrong. But I think it's wise for a business to think about all those different things. Mm -hmm. And at the same token, someone may may argue. I don't know if I'm fully 100 percent would do that. Argue that same thing is that they don't see a plan B. They want to change the world. And they go on 100% in, they, like, there's no way they're selling this. They'll go down with the ship if the ship yeah, goes and, down. Yeah, and who am I to tell that person that they're wrong? Mm. You know what I mean? That's, that's all my point is. My point is, even if you, like you said, your, your motive was to change something in the world, and if you go flat broke and you end up, you know, struggling financially, who am I to say, boy, they should have sell? Because you may be more fulfilled mm. knowing that you went through with it as opposed to selling. Because in your head, you may feel like, you did out. something you didn't want to yeah, do by sell selling. So that's all I'm trying to say is I don't think it's fair to set motives for people. We don't know what people's goals are or what they want to do with their business. So I don't think you'd be like, you should sell or I'm you should be willing to sell. I'm going to send y'all the research on what it is that I'm talking but about. This is not, read it this is not about, but this is not this is not about what research. What you feel about that? No, because yeah, no, it's so the research 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 says the majority says Okay, for example, you as still an entrepreneur, would you agree that your business needs to be able to function without you? Correct. That's another episode, though. But again, that is another episode, but that is. But that's our opinion. In your, that's not your opinion. That's for our a opinion. successful business, it you okay? If you have to be there for your business to run, let me tell you, you something. You're not really. I let me tell that. you something. Let me let me show you why. Right? I, I was just. As, as a, a different doctor, conversation. Let me tell you. I was as just. As a doctor or as a web designer. Let me or tell you as something. A cookie baker. Let me give you an example. If here. You're not there. You want me to give you an example? Will you, Let me give you an you example. Again? No, but I will give you an example. Stay around entrepreneurship. It, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And, but it's, it's the same thing. It's like, I was just on the panel to Lincoln Bay and thing, right? Mm -hmm. And the lady who owned Island Cellular. Mm -hmm. Someone mm -hmm. asked that, someone posed that very question about, you know, your business being able to function without you. She disagrees. She wants to be in a business every day, putting in all the hours, making sure every decision go through her. Who am I to tell her that that's not the way she should do it, that she should be able to not be there and her business be able to function yeah, without her? You're a smart business person to tell her that. But see, again, that... And but that may be her life. That's, that's, Think that's, of it like a doctor. It depends a, on the person. Have the option. I'm not saying don't be there. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying don't be fully involved. But build a business that has the option to run without you because once you are not there, the business fails. I agree. That's not a good position I, for a I business. Agree. And I agree too, I agree. but that's our but that's opinions. That's, no, that's our that's position. Our, we, we have facts to support this. Those we have are, research that's, that's to support the, this. That's what I'm saying. You saying that someone should do that is an opinion. That is not a fact. No, that is an opinion. If you're we mix business, up you people mix up that. facts and opinions all the time. The research says the majority of people is wise for the majority of people to do that, right? That, yeah. what, what did, exactly, but that doesn't mean that the people that aren't doing that are failing. Are failing. Yeah, but if you would like to have a successful business, the best thing for you to do <laughs> is to build so a business everybody that can so operate the, without you. So the people outside the majority don't have successful businesses. Not that they're not successful <laughs> if they're not there. They're failing. If a doctor doesn't show up to his company or to his business one day, right? Let's say he's a doctor. If he does not show up, the business fails. You said what goes success on vacation. is for other people. I'm not setting what success is for other people. I'm just talking about making money. I, I would switch out. The, dollar, I would switch out the daughter, word. I would switch out the word daughter. failing for limiting. You're not limiting. If you're not there, the business makes no money. I don't know if you call that a failure or not. Well, you don't know if the doctor has understudies or whatever. But this is what I'm saying. He's now he's developing a business right. that can run without him. If he has understudies, he has other people who are mm. doctors or whatever in the office with him. He can take a break. He'll still be making money, X percentage of whatever the people do, and the business will be able to carry on But for the him. businesses that currently do not have that, are they, in, are they failing? failing? I'm saying they need to move. They need to move toward 
having a business that can be run. Okay, you can suggest that. Yeah, yeah, and suggestion. all I'm saying is, maybe they are doing exactly what they want. And who am I to say that they need to not do that? You understand? That's all my point is. I, I understand what you're saying, and I agree that if you're building a business, you should be, you should, it would be good to build a business that could function without you, and that you, you try to maximize your profit or maximize whatever growth you want. I, I feel that way too. However, what, all I'm simply saying is, you don't know what someone's motive is or what they want. They may want to be in that business every day, and they may not want it to function without them, and that's their goal. So I can't say that they are a failure or they wrong for that. I can't tell somebody how they should but live their can. life or run their business. I'm saying I mean, I could, but I would be out of place. For example, if I say you need good customer service to run a successful business, you would agree with me on that, right? Yeah. But somebody could say, I don't care about customer service. I don't do whatever. You wouldn't encourage them to do better or to move toward better customer service? I can, but however, that's their business at the end of the day. It is their business, that's but they do what they you can do. encourage them or you can say, you know what, this is the right way or not. I mean, I agree. agree for do whatever but at the end of the day, that's their decision. The right that's their, well, you could call it the right way, but that's, that's again, that's opinion. That's their decision at the end of the day. Okay. That's all I'm saying. To increase the spark in your 9 to 5, you should also focus on training. I think seize as many training opportunities that are available to you, whether through the company or otherwise. Like look, oh, yeah. look for things to go to. Look for conferences. Look for All like I know. Greg talk about the thing with Lincoln Bay in the other day. I think there's another one coming up, or maybe that was the last one. I don't mm. know, but like look for these. Well, this is annual, so it's supposed to be another one, I guess. Okay, next so year. next year, mm. but you know, look for conferences. But look for things to attend to increase your knowledge and focus on becoming the expert in your field. Right. Um, um, I think that's a could, major thing. And I think, uh, like, on that, just to, I guess, if we're wrapping up, somewhere, just on that note, too, especially one, you have companies that are, they have a budget or whatever to allow training for you to go to conferences or do workshops mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. But even if they don't, you still got to think career. If your company doesn't offer your conference, that's no yourself. reason you yourself can't go to a conference and Without. be inspired to do the yep. different things. Mm -hmm. Edu continuous education, no matter what form it's in, is imperative for career development, or even just to get fresh ideas, or even to network if you're in that type of thing. Mm -hmm. But you, that, that's the best way, I think, in my opinion, outside of probably going to college or whatever like that, for you to get almost close to free Ben, like benefits of networking and meeting people and learning new experiences. Yeah. Right. No, I mean, you we, have, we have YouTube. And, and YouTube. read people. Yeah. Read. And Google yeah. University. Read something. And yeah. stack uh, uh, overflow for the techies. All right, we can wrap yeah. that one up, Travis. We reached the max of our time on this one. Well, <laughs> so since, since I opened, I probably close it up too. I'd like to apologize to everybody again <laughs> for my <laughs> absence Apology in the last couple of weeks. But I, I love the energy. I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling <laughs> like I'm back in the game. And thank you for joining. And if you have any questions or suggestions or what we should talk about in the next couple of episodes, please send us a message. And I'd like to close out. I'm Travis Miller. <laughs> I name Greg. Gail uh, And thank you for tuning in to. to What's our sign off? No, I have to sign off. Okay. Losers make, make excuses. excuses. Winners make, make adjustments. Fun. All right, Gary V. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's the oh, after show. It's the after show. That's one thing I miss. I miss the, 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 the banging of the heads of you two on different. <laughs> Oh! oh